Ford viewers and welcome back to the South Bend Auto Channel. Sitting inside the 2017 Hyundai Santa Fe. Uh, don't know what engine's in it, but rest assured it is big. Uh, and the guy has a big problem. He said he pulled this thing out of his garage and he heard this pop and then a bang and then a clang. And he looked on the ground and found a piece of a spring. Uh, so he had it towed here. He didn't dare drive it. Uh, and this was last week and I had looked at it and it d indeed does have a broken left front spring. Looks like the spring wound itself up around uh, the upper strut mount. So uh, I wants us to fix it. I had to order some parts from Hyundai and they just showed up. Uh, we got a new spring, uh, new strut bearing and a couple of new aftermarket struts. So wants us to tear it apart and put them in and I thought I'd bring you along. So I've never done struts on one of these little guys. But I looked in service data and apparently you can take this little cover off and I'll be jiggered. Look right in there. That's a good, uh, good thing there. Hold on. Gotta get me the light. Now look at that. So the bolts for the top of the strut are right in here. So that's handy. Uh, and then there's another one just like this access panel on the other side. I think before I raise it up, I'm going to get those nuts off and then just leave one threaded on lightly by hand. That way, when we're ready to get all the jiggly bits off underneath, we'll give her the reach around from the fender, hold the strut, and then be able to reach up here and just take one off. One strut bolt, kind of piss her to get to. Use an offset, or yeah, a little offset wrench here. I don't know if I'll be able to get enough power to break that thing loose or not. Come on, baby. Oh, look at that. So this is about the only difficult one to get to without tearing more of the, uh, more of the cowling off. The one closest to the inside of the vehicle here, that one we're gonna leave once we crack it loose. We're gonna leave it on. We're gonna spin it on just a couple of couple of clicks. There we go. So those are all loose now. I'll reach in. Look at that baby. She's a long and thin and quarter inch drive. A little micro head on it. We're amazing. It is the Astro. I don't even know the model number. Have to look it up. Uh, I've got them in three eighths and half inch drive. Super handy. All of the nuts are off, like I say, except the two inner ones. I've got them threaded on just a smidge, so the strut will stay in when we pick the car up. And now we can peel the wheels and finish taking the struts out. I hate wheel locks. And do people still steal wheels nowadays? At least not where I live, they don't. It's not a wheel big problem around here. I'm sure some places it's a wheelie big deal. <laughs> okay, that's it folks, I'm done. I'm done with the jokes. They're not wheelie that good anyways. So we give her a little douche of what we're using today, the Deep Creep by Seafoam. Uh, now that it does anything, it may, but there's really not a mechanic on this planet that has time enough to wait for penetrating oil to actually penetrate. Uh, at least ones that work in the shop typically don't. At least I don't. I don't know. I can't speak for everyone, folks. What size are these? 19 high? Look like a 19 on that side, 17 on the other. We'll get some tools. We've got to peel off the sway bar link, which is also 17. We'll get uh, some sockets and some wrenches, and we're almost out. Bringing out the dog. Available now in stores. Limited time. Loosen that one. Loosen that one. Get a little wrench. Take that one out. Take that one out. Drop it on the floor. Here's that little fella. Oh, 
There's that little fella right there. Come on, baby. Come on. What we got handy? We got a we got a ratchet. Ping, there's that one. Hey, if Astro didn't want you to use this for a punch, they shouldn't have made it long and slender. Because before we get too far ahead of ourselves, we should clip the camera on here. Uh, drop the knuckle out of the strut. You know, obviously, when you take the bolt out, she comes loose, and then the strut should have the ability, uh, maybe, let me move this out of the way again, to rotate, providing your strut bearing is somewhat intact still. So I just pulled the knuckle down here, set it to the side. Don't rip your CV shaft in half, all right, folks? Rotated it so I can get to this thing whatever you want to call it, the old whatchamacallit, the sway bar link. Let's get a pair of vice grips. I'm going to see if we can't, uh, I wish they had a flat on the back side of them, but they don't. Now you've got to use, why are you using such a little pair of vice grips, Erico? I thought you were a man. Uh, we have to use a smaller pair because we don't want to rip the boot, so we need one that's thin. And this is the thinnest pair I have, so we want to get in here but we want to be able to get a good bite on it. I think we can go a little tighter. Ready? Oh, mother lover. There we go. And then we'll try to give it just a couple little tunks. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Must be the deep creep got in there deep. So we unhook that. And there's no hole in the front to hold it like with a Torx bit. Not that that ever works ever in your life. Oh, that's great. Freaking ding dong. Yeah, 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 ding dong. What the heck movie was that from? Yeah, yeah, ding dong. We want to hear yeah, yeah, ding dong. It was a, it was a Will Ferrell movie. <laughs> it was stupid. Uh, but I still watch it because I watch movies like that. Uh, there we go. This strut is ready to come out minus the bolt up top. I'm gonna go prep the other side like a prepper. We're gonna line this back up straight. We're gonna set the car down, go up top, hold her on the shaft, take the nut off up top, out she'll come. So the driver's side here is a bit more jacked up because the spring is busted and it spun itself around so the strut is kind of, well, maybe. Let me see. I don't think I can rotate it. Oh, baby, yeah. Uh, so we can, got all excited for nothing. It's still a little jacked up, making this side a tad more difficult. Not on a grand scale, but minutely more difficult. We just gotta be careful taking it out. I don't think the spring's gonna cut loose on us. If it does, it ain't gonna go far. It can just untwirl itself. If you're worried about it, just cut the spring, take the torch and just, just nip the spring or you know, take some tension off it if you're if you're worried. If you're a worry wart. Come on, baby. There she is. She got some tension on it. Mm. Where's the, uh, is that one there? Stick that in there, we don't want to lose that. And we'll take our nuts and bolts off this side and stick them on the lift, and we're ready to rip her down. I'm gonna demonstrate for you here. Coming in from the side and up and under. I'm just gonna hold the strut. <clears throat> Grunt a little bit. Take that off. And then we'll bend down here. Slip it out. I'm gonna show you on the other side. Now she comes. So there's this side. That's where the spring is busted. Fresh break, baby. Right there. The spring is sprung. And uh, I'm glad I got a strut bearing. Because I see that's all busted up. So hopefully I don't need any more parts than what I got. Um, all right, let's take out the other side. Grab that baby like that. And then we gotta come down here. Move all your hoses and stuff. Ooh. Gotta let it rest there for a minute. 
We have to take the ABS. I took this one out of the bracket on the other side. Come on, baby. There she goes. Slip it underneath your strut here. Come on, man. Oh, there we go. oh, oh, oh baby is born. At this point, you're going to want to take your strut to a shop if you don't have a strut spring compressor at home and have them swap out your parts for you. We're going to do it back here on the old brand. That doesn't fit. Uh, let's try it again here. We'll try this side. That one fits. So we need to hold the stud on the strut and then figure out which way to turn it. Oh, that way is the way it's going to go now. I've already got this compressed. Should be good enough to uh, spin off there now. My hand, nylock nut, you know. Make some mental notes. If you're doing this yourself and you're using the old death trap screws, make sure you make some marks. You know which way things are going, which way the spring's facing, which way the strut's facing, which way the upper mount's facing. Mark it with a paint marker if you got to. And then pull this out. There she is, baby. And now we're going to relieve the tension so we can put us because we're putting springs. You want springs on both sides. We don't want the car sitting cockeyed. Anything like that. So we're going to back this off. Take the tension off it. Be mindful of how you have your spring set up on the bottom and on the top and all that because it'll make going together a whole lot easier. This one sits relatively straight. I say that and now it does this. Mm -hmm. This is a little strut box. Uh, not sure who makes it or anything like that, but there's some information for you. Bavarian Autosports. Part number is a Bravo 880081. In case you want. Nice bit of kit. I broke a few of the tools in it. Haven't had a chance to contact them to get new ones. Now we will bring our spring over here. Now that it is unsprung. So we can't get our upper mount off it. Looks like there is some clear defining marks between the top and bottom. That's our strut spring or strut bearing right there. This baby should come off. That baby comes off. This is our bellow and our joust bumper is inside here. Little guy lives in there. <laughs> And uh, we want to get this bearing off. However, before we pull the bearing off, we should go look, see what the new ones look like. And then we can beat it off there. New spring from Hyundai. Uh, not a sponsor. Try to get a sponsorship. They would not sponsor us. There's the part number on that. She's right there. Is it got any other information on it that it shouldn't show you? I don't think so. Here's the bearing. There's the number on that. Made in the Korea. Ding dong. So there's our new strut bearing. This is what allows your wheel to turn, or the strut to turn without binding up your spring. So there's that. They weren't very expensive, like 20 bucks, I think. So we do need to take this rubber off here. I'm guessing. Am I right, my guy? Maybe not. Might be a different style, fella. Let me get a screwdriver. Screwdriver, new pair of gloves. Oh, oh. The rubber seems to be attached pretty well, but it's got to come off. It's got to be the uh, insulator. I would imagine. No, I, I think it's molded on to. Yeah, it's molded on to this strut bearing. So that's interesting. Makes me wonder if they just did away with it. Or what the story is here. It's an SKF bearing, but yeah, no, this is molded onto this strut bearing. It is not separate. You can see 
how it's bonded right there. And if I pull on it, it's just going to tear it in half because it's kind of glued right to this. So uh, it must be a different design. I'm going to check with Hyundai just to make sure. It would be really kind of suck right now if I didn't get that and needed it. So I looked on OEM parts and they do show it separate. So I got my little world's smallest pry bar and fit it in here before we tear this thing to pieces and just started working it. So I told myself, I was like, work it guy, work it. And I kept going around because I did not order this. I didn't know it was going to be a big deal. So we're not going to make it a big deal, but apparently you got to come from the top side here and just work that guy. Yeah, baby. So there's that. So that is how it comes off. So yes, I was correct. It is bonded to like a plastic ring, which will go on the new strut bearing. So I'm going to take and get this cleaned up because we want it nice. We want it clean. I'll wash it off in the sink with some Dawn. Clean that up. Clean up the upper strut mount. Then we'll boop. Bippity boppity bacon. Do do. It's all clean. That's all going to go like this. Why not just go like this initially? Get that baby all squeezed on there. Now this uh, bearing, it doesn't matter which way it goes on here. As long as it goes on. Oh, mother, mother, son of a... I don't think it matters what way it goes. No, it doesn't. There's no alignment. There's no keys. There's no... There's no nothing. You just gotta... We need something. We need a whacking device. What we got down here? Hold on, folks. Ah, oh yeah. Look at this. I got just what we need. Why won't you go on? You shouldn't be giving me a fit. Oh, it did. <laughs> it fit perfectly. She's right on there all the way around. Why did that act like it was doing something? It seemed like it was getting all kind of cattywampus, but clearly it is on all the way. So there's that. We'll stick down the tool to the side. Open up our new spring. Identify the top and the bottom. Paint marks going at the bottom, just like the OG. Uh, let's get our new strut. The lower insulator. I just took it off the old strut. Uh, let's see. This is going to go on like so. It's got little holes it lines up in. Line them babies up. Grab it by the nipples and make sure they pull all the way through. Sometimes, well, these ones don't have a little retainer, so never mind. Don't pull on the nipples. Come around here. It latches under there, so it just kind of sits on there. Um, can I get a hold of that? No, oh, you can't because you're a wuss. Boink! Rub him and watch him grow. There it is. That's out all the way. Uh, we'll get our spring already in the strut compressor. We can take our mount. We can stick that back on here. Kind of line it up where it was if you want, not super critical, but so there's that. We're gonna line her up how we had it, roughly ish, if you remember. I don't. Somewheres in this neighborhood, we were. I told you to remember all this stuff because you're gonna need it. I think we're about like this. I know the back one's not hitting, but it will. This is where we need to have a little trust. It'll all straighten up. This is how it was when we took it apart, and this was a non-broken side, so. Or a thing's gonna come flinging out of there like a mother's lover and catch us in the guts. Hopefully not. That's what we're hoping it doesn't.
but you ain't gonna be that quick, I'll tell you. I'll tell you that right now. Now, you'll notice up here we got a little flat spot. And on this upper mount, there's also a flat spot. And you line up the flat spot with the flat spot. It's that simple, folks. We'll come up through here. Whoa, Chevy Thunder! <laughs> Josh is pulling it. Rotted out Chevrolet. Got to compress her a little bit more. And then we got to rotate that till that comes up through the mount. Now, like I said, you got to line up the flat spot. I don't believe in Santa Claus. And I don't believe that this can go through if we're not in the correct position. There it is, baby. Where's my clamp? I'm just going to clamp it on the bottom temporarily. So we find the nut and the washer. So we got a flat washer, nylock, and conveniently the aftermarket changes the middle here, so we're going to need some different tools to put it together. So let's find them. Yeah, thanks for telling me, you jerks. I just testing you. Yeah, a couple of you passed. A couple of you said, hey, you forgot that. You didn't go. Well, congratulations. You guys just won. Nothing. Stick this baby back on there. Wow, what an idiot. Let's get the wrinkles out of it first. Not that it matters, but it's just personal preference. It drives me nuts. Get it all together and see that one wrinkle at the top and know that you could have fixed it. There we go. It's not like you're driving some Chevy Thunder there, Josh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just leave the exhaust the way it is. Yeah, I know. He's like, oh, I want to fix my exhaust. I'm like, oh. I didn't know he didn't want to be cool. <laughs> What's that here for? Uh, service inspection. Oh. And of course, one exhaust. I thought we told him to ditch that truck. I thought the frame was rotted on it. Anyway? I thought so. Yeah, I remember. What, what year is it? 2010? Yeah, it's an 09. Oh, 09, yeah, it's gotta be smoke then. Maybe. Let's see, get things lined up here, fella. Where was she before? Right there. There we go. Clamp you that just to hold it. Now, at this point, we will get our devices. Now we're just going to take and snug this up. That's not going to work. There it goes. We're going to snug this little guy up. Then we're going to position the bottom of the strut where we need it. Right now we just have it kind of holding. Make sure that you torque this down with a torque wrench in the exact manner that service data tells you to. We'll just go snugging it up. All right, so we'll come back and do that here in a minute or two. Probably won't show that on camera, but definitely torque it. Da, 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 da. Line up the bottom where it belongs. And then we're going to start taking some tension off of it. You're always so tense, you strut. There we go. There's that. Nothing blew up. Now we just got to do it again. And then just be sure, come on, yeah, baby, push your uh, joust bumper just back into that upper mount if you were a ding dong and forgot to, uh, and put it in the mount before you put the shot together. So, anyhow, no casualties. Uh, rotate, grab her between your legs here, and then you can rotate your upper bearing whichever way it needs to go. Now, these conveniently have an R for the right and an arrow for facing out, uh, which you would have noted when you took it apart. Now doing the other side, the left side with the broken spring is exactly the same except you have to be a little more cautious, um, which happens to be my middle name, because the spring is sticking out and it's kind of sharp and she can bite you. Oh, there's a, speaking of getting bit, there's a big old spider. Uh, wrong way. Uh, wrong way. 
wrong way again. You ever woke up in the morning and says, man, I am not going to sleep good tonight unless I figure out what is inside a strut bearing. Why do they call it a strut bearing? Well, today's your lucky day if that's you folks. Here's one of the, you know, the good one we took off. And here is the inside of the one that had catastrophic failure after the spring broke. This, this didn't break the spring, but uh, when the spring broke, it came up and smashed it and popped it apart. And essentially, that's all they are, folks. They are an actual ball bearing, at least on this model. Now, uh, some of the General Motors ones you take apart because they're cheap. They don't use ball bearings, just like two plastic plates that slip past each other and they're real crappy design. This is a pretty good design, providing it, it seals good and it doesn't get a lot of junk up in here. Now, this, these ones were still pretty greasy, even despite being busted apart. And this style here tends to last a long time until... You know, the impenetrable seal gets penetrated and, well, then the rest is history. I don't know if we can break this one apart. <clears throat> Mother lover. Maybe. <laughs> Probably if it's spring broken apart, we can. If you want to look in there, show you what it looks like while it's a little bit intact. Ooh, there we go. Pop it apart. Bada bing, bada boom. Bearing, bearing races. They're just plastic. I think the race is plastic. Appears to be. Nope. She's a metal race. Why would it be plastic, you idiot? So, there it is. There's your strut bearing. In case you're ever wondering, do not confuse these. Even though these are big, don't confuse these with a muffler bearing. Muffler bearings are all metal, whereas these have some plastic on them. Before you go put it in, make sure you have your upper strut mount oriented the way it was with the bottom of your strut. And, you know, watch out for your brake hoses and such as you go to put it in. So we're going to take, slip it down past the brake hoses, just like so, and then we're going to get her just resting on top of the axle, not on the boot, and then we're going to look up top and line up the upper mount. Once you get it poking through, stick one of the nuts on it. And then might have to wiggle it to get the other ones in. Oh fella. Just get all three of them started. There you go, just like that. Now once they're started, we can go put all this stuff underneath. And then when we set the car down, we'll See them right up in there. We'll get right in there with our torque wrench and be able to torque them right down for you. Now we should be able to get this bad boy line back up in there. We'll get a bolt ready and then we'll just pick up the lower control arm. Just like so. And then we'll get the bottom one. Now there is a little bit of slop in this bad mama jamma. Um, sometimes the strut aftermarket struts will be slatted so you have adjustable camber so to speak there's just a tiny bit of movement in this one we will probably leave it just in a relaxed outward position um, if when we do the alignment we check the alignment and the camber's off let's say it's you know way out of spec we can remove the cam bolt and put an aftermarket cam bolt in or we can remove this the strut knuckle bolt here and put an aftermarket cam bolt in it to allow us to have some adjustment. That's easy enough to do. I typically don't put them in prior to checking the alignment. You know, looking at the tire wear and stuff on this, it looked like it was good previously. So I won't be surprised if it's still, you know, respectfully well or with an alignment or close enough. Um, we will check though when we're done. That's part of the process, but. Let's see if we can get this pull through. I don't know if that hole's threaded. Some of these are self-threading. That one does not look like a self-threading bolt. And the hole, the hole is the wrong size threads. Thanks a lot, Tenneco, you jerks. This is an eight millimeter uh, thread. Looks like eight, one, two, five. And I think we're gonna need a six, a six, one, oh. Um, let's go see if I got one. Yeah, 
There we go. I also grabbed a lock washer too. Uh, let me find a 10 mil. One hour later, I found a 10 millimeter. Just kidding. We got piles of them. Snug that little guy up. Of course, we'll come back through and we'll torque that to factory spec. Not that we have the proper torque spec now because they changed the size of the fastener. So, guess we just won't torque anything at this point. Um, the sway bar. Feels like she's just tight as a tiger in those bushings because it's up quite a ways. JK, it was just hitting the axle on the other side. Uh, oh yeah, baby, she's still a little tight in the bushings. There we go. Let's pull her down a little bit. We're at full droop, so. All right. I'm going to go hook some stuff up by the other side and then we're going to come through and torque all of this down. Hey, time gets away from me. Had to walk away from this for a minute and go do some other stuff. And then I think a few hours went by. <laughs> so here we are. I think this is where we left off. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to lightly snug it up and then, like I say, come back through. Look up all of our torque specs and then get everything torqued properly. Wrong size, fella. Good thing I left stuff out of my tool cart, huh? Those we won't 100% torque until we get it on the alignment machine. And then we'll see if we're going to end up uh, having to put a cam on it. So now that the weight's back on it, we can go through and snug these little guys up. I'm going to spin them down my hand. And then, you know, obviously we'll get in here because the, the torque wrench and all that stuff. And do it by the book. And Make it right. So I'll work on that, and um, I think that's about it, folks. We're just about done. We'll get her checked out for alignment. We'll go driving around town a little bit first, make sure that the uh, springs are all kind of settled where they're going to be uh, for now, anyways. So this is over on the driver's side. Uh, I forgot to show you about the black cap. They just go on, and it will click on. All the way around. Come on, baby. there she goes. They click on, they snap right over top of the strut. And then of course you can probably figure out how this goes. Just like so, that's that. And that's some aftermarket gizmo. That was probably enhanced a little too much. Crazy mother. Number one, don't take your stuff to the alignment guy unless you get things broke loose. He, I mean, I know it's kind of like his job, but he will love you so much and probably do a good alignment uh, because you did every, got everything broke loose for him. Oh, I love it, son of a, oh, that, she's a little snug. Um, so the problem with getting stuff broke loose on the alignment rack is A, it's a huge pain in the ass because the runways are in the way. And B, if we got to break out the torch, which we might have to do on this one, um, things grow. And then you got to wait for that sucker to cool all the way down before you can do the alignment because, test me on this, folks. Put it on your alignment machine. Heat that jam nut. Just the jam nut up with the torch while watching the readings on your screen. It'll take the toe out of spec. Um, it'll move it several tenths of a degree. Uh, just simply by heating it up and then you got to sit there and just wait forever for it to cool down um, So if we have to do that by the time we get over there, we're gonna be <laughs> we're gonna be cool, man Right there folks, uh, we're ready for the alignment now we need to take it for a rip 
and we should be good to drive it around a little bit. We didn't change much uh, in regards to the alignment. So that's what we'll do. We'll set her down, take it for a two, check with my boy Josh, see if he's ready for it. Alright. make noise the entire time. Like I say, we'll go around town, we'll hit some railroad tracks. We'll make sure everything feels okay. See the springs are kind of sitting on their rubber seats, which they should be. We put them together in the proper order. I don't think anything's coming. We'll find out here in a second. Oh, smooth, baby, like butter. Smooth like butter. The uh, Tenneco OE Spectrum by Monroe. Kind of hit or miss with them, I'll uh, be honest with you. And I'm not 100% impressed with their quality, but. Lately, they've been okay, but boy, I tell you, when they first came out and advertised them as their Asian strut, everyone I did, I got back leaking, piece of crap. So I quit using them for a while. Try to teach them a lesson, but it doesn't. It doesn't teach them anything. Nobody cares. Big corporate, big business, Tenneco, giant company, and that's who now makes. Well, they make you know who. And they also make Napa chassis stuff. So that explains to me why the Napa chassis stuff has gone right in the toilet. Um, along with Mook and just a bunch of Chinese garbage. So, unfortunately, as these companies like that, Dorman and stuff, take over the aftermarket automotive industry parts, this just is what happens. And you deal with it. Or you buy OEM. Uh, which some some customers just can't afford uh, as a matter of fact the OEM struts on this were horrendous in price um, so and the guy I think I think he told me he's getting rid of this actually he was gonna get rid of it this year he told me for a new telly ride like here but with Rona and shortages and circuit boards and microchips and all that crap that's going on with the old pandemic um, you know nothing's available so He's gonna hold off. So I'm told. Anyways, little story. TMI, TMI. Uh, this feels pretty, pretty normal. Steering wheel's nice and straight here when we drive. Let's go see what Josh has to say. <laughs> Where's my guy? Oh, there he is. Josh has got her up on the alignment equipment here. Here's where we're at spec wise. So it's pretty darn close. I know the customer is going to be getting rid of this car uh, relatively soon. So I'm going to give him the option on uh, the camber if he wants it, you know, dead nuts because this is about two tenths of a degree off and then uh, two tenths of a degree or so the other way. On that side, toe obviously will straighten out. Uh, the rear is not too bad. It's not really that horrible. So if he still intends on getting rid of this in six months or so and the camber is super close, it's not going to cause him any tire wear issues. We'll probably just have my boy Josh straighten out the toe and ship it for now, but definitely going to leave it up to the customer. Well, that's that, folks. Uh, the guy was happy with just, just set the toe and, you know, adios. I told him it was really close. And I also uh, explained to him if he's going to keep it, you know, let's say, you know, decide he's going to drive it for another year. Uh, wants the best wear out of his tires we should tweak that just a little bit uh, to tweak it in but I also explained to him that if I was him I would drive it for at least you know a tank full of gas so you know three four hundred miles make sure those springs are at where they're going to be at you know get the you know the sag in them or whatever however you want to explain it just kind of make sure that's all settled and that's where they're going to be for you know the majority of their life till they break so that's kind of my thoughts right or wrong that's what I told him so uh, what I'm going to tell you though is something a little different. I'm going to tell you to go in that comment section. The questions, the comments, the concerns you might have. Find us on the Insty, the Facebook. Just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.